Flat pattern making is the art of taking a basic flat pattern and manipulating it to create styles and patterns that sew together. The last color, we're going to do a two-piece convertible collar. A two-piece convertible collar has a collar band with an extension so it can be buttoned, but you could leave it open. And this is a convertible collar sewn into the collar band. I need to start out by measuring my front and back necklines. So just take a bendable ruler and my front is four and seven eighths. My back is three and three quarters. I've got three layers in here from the center back folds to the shoulder seam, four and seven eighths. From shoulder seam to center front is three and three quarters. I'll square a line. And I'll do my top collar first. I want my top collar to be two and a half inches wide. So I'll make a parallel line. I have two parallel lines, two and a half inches away from each other. I'll start by lightly squaring a line. I'll measure up a half an inch. Draw a line from shoulder seam to center front. I'm finding the center and turning my ruler, bending down an eighth, blending each direction. Right. This is my new bottom edge. For the top edge, I need to maintain that width. So I'll come back and put my ruler right on that new curved line and make sure that I blend back into the top of the color there where the line intersects. Make sure you blend. All right. So I've maintained my width there. Now I can decide any angle I want for the point of the color. So I'm going to be kind of conservative. You try it several different ways, any way that you like. Here's the point of my color. I've got three layers of paper. One will become the top color, one will become the under color, and one will become the interfacing. I'll cut it out like before. What I've done here has no seam allowance. After I finish this, I'll transfer it to hard manila paper. And at that point, I'll put seam allowances on. Let me notch my pattern right here. For my center back, a quarter inch away from the fold, I'll notch. And the reason I go a quarter inch away from the fold is to give a half an inch distance between the notches. I have three pieces. None of them have seam allowance on this point, but I'll take one from my top collar. I'm going to label that TP. The second one will be my under collar. I'm going to put UC. This will be my interfacing. I'll put INTER. My top collar will get the interfacing fused to it like this. Okay, so I'll have a nice crisp edge. My top collar will have a seam allowance of a quarter inch on either side. My interfacing will not get a uh, seam allowance because I want it to fuse right up to the stitched edge. My under collar, however, I need to shave an eighth of an inch off the top. When I sew it together, and flip it by having the under collar an eighth of an inch narrower than the top collar it will make this seam roll and be slightly hidden when it's stitched together this is how I take off the eighth of an inch when I get to the point I want to blend it into the point Just a little tiny bit makes all the difference in the world. 
For instance, men's uh, shirts will have a top collar and under collar like this. By sewing this edge to this edge, it will pull everything in that direction. You won't see the stitch line. On nice shirts, jackets, that type of thing, we have a top collar and under collar. I would say a lot of sportswear companies do not have that under collar difference because they're all about speed. So they want to just be able to grab and put the pieces together and sew them really fast. But the proper way to do it is to have an under collar with an eighth of an inch less than the top collar. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, couture clothing costs more because you'll have little tricks like that inside to make the pattern lay nice or to hide the seam or the lapel. Those extra little steps make a big difference in the quality.